Welcome to another interesting class with your favorite teacher, Mrs. Tessie. It's the third week of resumption already and in today's class, we'll be looking at the third state of matter called gases, as well as some examples and characteristics. So if you are ready, I want you to sit back, get your notes ready, so I can jot down salient points. So are you ready? Let's get started. What is a gas? A gas, first off, is a third state of matter, and the other two states being solids and liquids. We treated these two states already in our first and second week of resumption, right? So, a gas is a third state of matter. And some examples of gases are air, bubble, steam, oxygen, and fart. Yes when you shift your weight to one side and release some very smelling harmful gases called fart that also is a gas and there's something familiar or something similar to all these examples i just listed yes you cannot see gas right okay now we're going to look at the properties of gases we look at them one by one the first property i have here is that gases have no fixed shape i can ask you what is the shape of this object and you can tell me okay a ball is round you can say this table is rectangular or square in shape but you cannot tell me the shape of a gas just like you cannot tell me the shape of a liquid right so gases and liquids have this thing in common they have no fixed shape any container they find themselves they take the shape of the container am i right secondly gases have no fixed volume they occupy any container they find themselves unlike liquids and, and solids liquids and solids have fixed volume but for a gas it has no fixed volume its size just changes it fills any container it finds itself. If it's found, if it finds itself in a small space, it occupies that small space. And if it finds itself in a large space, trust me, it's going to spread around and occupy a large space. That is why I often say that children are disturbed in class and are about everywhere are gases. <laughs> so if you're a noise making type, you are restless, just know that you're a gas, right? Okay, so let's look further. Gases flow. They flow. How do they flow? You don't see them, yes, but they flow. When you're walking down the road, down the street, and you start to perceive some fine aroma of fried chicken or um, cooking rice, you wonder how that aroma gets to your nostrils, right? Yes, because somebody is busy cooking in his or her kitchen and the gases, because they flow, they leave that kitchen, they flow out from that kitchen and into the street and straight to your nose. Right. And that is how you smell it. They don't just remain fixed. They don't stay in one place like solids. Solids are the only ones that don't flow. They are hard. They are fixed. They stay in just one place. But liquids and gases, they flow. And that is why they are considered as fluids. What did I say? They are considered as what? Fluids. Right. The next property is that the particles of gases are very far apart. Very far apart. They are not close at all. Unlike in solids, they are tightly packed. In liquids, they are loosely packed. But in gases, they are far. They don't have anything to do with each other. The, the, the force of attraction that holds them together is so weak. So, if it's not even there, it's not there. That's why they are far apart. For gases, the force is so strong. For liquids, it's weak. But for gases, sorry, for solids, the force is so strong. For liquids, the force is weak. But for gases, the force is not there. So, they are very far apart. And finally, gases are compressible. You can force a gas to keep entering into a container. Yes. Like, for example, if you see the other two states of matter, solids and liquids, they are not compressible. You cannot force human beings, you cannot force a solid to occupy a particular space 
that the solids cannot occupy. If somebody is sitting on a chair and that chair con is, it usually takes just one person, a second person cannot sit on that same chair because you cannot compress that person to become small so a second person can join. So it is with liquids. When a cup of water is full, you cannot add more water because you cannot press down that water. But you see for gases, the particles keep going in. They keep going in. They keep pressing themselves together until the vessel, that is the container holding them, will burst. That is why you notice that when you are blowing a balloon, you keep letting air in, it keeps going. And the next thing you hear is bah! the balloon gets burst, or a ball, or a tire. So the gas is not going to stop going in, you're going to keep going in until the vessel can no longer hold. So gases are very compressible. So in summary, we learned what state of matter gas is, and I said it's the third state of matter. The other two being solids and liquids. Solids is the first, liquid is the second. Now, so exam some examples of gases, we have air, steam, bubble, fart, and what have you. And we looked at the properties of gases, which has, we said it has no fixed shape, it has no fixed volume, the particles are very far apart, it is compressible. And what's the last one? Do you remember the last property of gas mentioned? Let's see how smart you can be. Yeah, can you think? Can you think? <laughs> that will be your assignment. So let's find out in class if you were following my class. So until our next class, I say thank you from me and goodbye. Remember to stay safe.